is actually going to work. Uh, it's going to defeat this oligarchical democracy that we have, right? So if you're confused about what ranked choice voting is, uh, it's basically, it allows, it, it specifically allows for uh, multiple parties, right? It pushes for this notion of, of having multiple parties, which, you know, in a, in, a, in a corporate oligarchical democracy like the one that we have now, third parties are going to be treated like, in, like they're, they're a, a, an allergic parasitic infection that we need to eradicate from our world, right? Like this notion, but, but it's like, no, that, that, that's choice. That's choice. It's more choice. It's not fucking just red or blue. It's just more choices. We need more choices. And it, it uses a ranking system, rank choice voting, ranking system. So you have uh, a bunch of different choices and you rank them. You go one, two, three, four, five, right? Check off boxes. There's very, very different ways to do it. The state of Maine is doing this now. Um, and uh, this goes through various different rounds of voter counts till we arrive at a majority. So if you're confused about how, this, how, how the counting system actually works, right, uh, it can be confusing um, it can be confusing if you're uncertain about how things work. So let's look at, I put together a very nice little slideshow for you. Okay, so uh, we, you, you look at a ballot and you look at five different parties. You have Democrat, Republican, Green Party, Libertarian, Independent. Let's just say those are the five parties, right? This is a hypothetical situation before everybody sits losing their shit to be like, where's the constitutional party? And where is the... It's, relax. It's, this is a hypothetical. Let's do it with five. Let's not overcomplicate things uh, while we're still learning about this. Uh, so you run your votes, right? And you run your votes and, uh, and you take them off. You have five parties and you go one, two, three, four, five. Um, and look, you don't have to make a choice for all five. Like, let's say you only believe in what the Green Party says and what the Democrats say and what the Libertarians say. You don't care for the independent candidate and you don't care for the Republican candidate. You don't even want them to, you don't even have to bear a choice for that. Okay, then you put that, you just, you don't count them in your ranking. That, that's, that's totally allowed in this system. You don't have to put a ranking system into it. Um, so the first round, everybody counts. What they count is, uh, the number ones, right? How many people voted for the Democrat as their number one choice? How many people voted for the Republicans as their number one choice? The Green Party, the Libertarians, the Independents as their number one choice. Uh, and let's say these are the hypothetical results, right? The Democrats are winning. They got 22%. The Republicans at 20, uh, or, sorry, the Democrats at 28. The Republicans at 22. The Green Party at 18. Um, and the Libertarians at 21. And the Independents, unfortunately, get 11% of the vote, which means uh, nobody got a majority. What we're trying to get to is that 51% at that bottom. Uh, we're trying to get to that 51% um of the votes. That's what that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a, tr a what what some might call a true majority. So right now there's no true majority in this situation. Right? There's no true majority in this situation. So uh, what what the next part of this process is is we'll say okay, the 11% of the people that voted independence as their number one choice, uh, we're going to take the independent candidate out. They didn't make it. Uh, but those 11% of the people don't lose their voice. They have not lost their voice. They take that 11% of people that voted for independent as their number one, and they all look at what their number two choice are, and then they add those votes. They redistribute those votes, the number two position from all of the independents, into the rest of the thing. So the independents are out. There's no more independents, unfortunately, but their number two uh, we look at the difference, right? We had we had that, and now we look at this. Some people voted for the Republicans, a little bit, a little bump on the Republicans. But there was a good bump on the Green Party, and there was a good bump on the Libertarians. Uh, but it does look like, unfortunately, the Republicans didn't get enough of the votes in the second round, right? They didn't get enough. Of, so 
we had the Republicans leading. We had the Republicans leading. And, uh, and very quickly we saw Green Parties and Libertarians because the independents, uh, their second choice was possibly Green Parties and Libertarians, mostly. Uh, so the Republican Party is now removed. So out of all of the people that voted for the Republican Party, we now look at who their number two choice was. And from the independents, whose number two was Republican, we go down to number three. So we go to the next rank down, right? So then we see that, okay, there was a little bit of a bump uh, for the Democrats, but really there was a big bump for the Libertarians and the big bump for the Green Party. So all of a sudden now, the Green Party and the Libertarians are neck and neck. They're looking pretty damn good. Uh, I did not adjust the rectangles properly. I'm sorry about that. Uh, for people that are going to freak out, let's just look at the numbers. It's fine. Um, but, <laughs> but now the Democrats are out because the Democrats didn't get enough votes. So now you go and you look to the next rank on everybody that chose the Democrats, right? So this might have some Republicans that chose Democrats as their number two or their number three. So now we have to go look at who their number four choice was. And then if you're, if you're a Democrat that voted Democrat number one, uh, you look at who their number two was. If their number two was a Republican or an independent, then you go to their number three and see who that was. And, and you know, likely that might have ended up being somebody from the Green Party. Um, and the numbers kind of rise up and now we have a majority. Right. So it seems like it's a little bit more complicated. I get it. I hope this kind of, the graph was supposed to explain it a little bit better. And I hope that kind of helped. But essentially, it's a ranking system. Until you get to that majority, until you get to this part where you have a majority, right? And that's what you want. Um, usually this system is called the instant runoff uh, or a single transferable. That's uh, what it's called. And the reason why this works, the reason why I think this is better, state of Maine thinks it's better, the country of Australia, Ireland, uh, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Italy, Various smaller states think it's better. Minnesota's trying it. Minneapolis and St. Paul are doing this in their elections. The reason why there's a trend of all this stuff rising is because the votes are more unique based on the patterns. There's less of a chance that there is going to be some kind of voter fraud. There's this fear that the Republicans have of, oh my God, there's going to be people crossing over states and voting too. Three fifteen times against the Republicans. That's not going to be a problem. Because why would somebody do not? Not that I'm saying that that is what people do, but why would somebody feel like they need to vote two or three times? Well, maybe because they feel like their voice isn't going to be heard. In this instance, your voice is heard, no matter what. It's not going to be your ideal candidate that might win, but. You might get two or three. And look, what I presented, um, we went through like three different rounds of voting, which I understand probably is what complicated things. But that might not have been the case, right? Maybe maybe all of the independents, a majority of the independents, their number two was the Democrats, which pushed the Democrats up by 30 points. You, who knows, right? It might only go two rounds. It might go three rounds, and that's it. We figure out the, the results from there. But the idea is to use this ranking system and move down the ranks to find out who the actual majority is. It involves some math. It involves some counting. It makes the, the counting process a little bit longer. But that's okay because, in my opinion, this is more democratic with less of a chance of money and corporate special interests getting in the way. Because it's more public. And it has, and, and we can verify this publicly a lot more. Uh, we wouldn't use this electronic counting system, um, you know, this black box system of counting uh, that, you know, like Diebold owns most of the counting systems. It's, we won't see that sort of stuff. It can, there's a possibility of it, but that's why you would incorporate laws to make sure that 
corporations aren't getting involved with the electoral process. What does this mean? Well, this means that all of the candidates are now going to have to know all of their constituents. That means you're going to need to know what corporate Democrats really stand for as a member of the Green Party, right? People that have, the people that want to vote for the Democratic candidate, you got to see if they if if they're going to make you their number two choice. So you got to go. Well, what is it going to take? What is it about the Green Party message that uh, you know mainstream Democrats can't get behind? You know, what is it about the libertarian message that a Democrat can't get behind? Right. And Democrats are going to have to do the same thing. So right now, I mean, you had Elizabeth Warren coming out and being like, I'm not even worried about anybody that's going to vote for Republican. I don't give a shit about them. And you're running for a presidential election. No, you have to care about them because they're part of the entire country that you want to fucking lead. This makes you do that. This makes you go, well, I'm going to need to get on that ranking system. I'm going to need to get to the number two or number three position. What do I need to do to do that? Right. How do I talk to these people? How do I use their language to convey my message. So it makes for a little bit more of a well-rounded candidate um, that you can stick to your message, but go, okay, listen, I think libertarians are worried about uh, taxation and they want a flat tax. All right, well, I'm not really for a flat tax, but look, here's my tax program and here's what I'm willing to kind of adjust to maybe hit that flat tax point. Maybe I'll maybe I'll move move this around just a little bit. So now maybe the libertarians are going to say, hey, that Green Party member looks pretty damn good. I, I agree with about I'll say 55 percent of what you're saying. But if you make that adjustment, it'll go up to 58 and you'll be my number two choice. Not bad. Same thing with the Democrats, right? Same thing with Republicans. You got to listen to them. You got to go into Republican areas and you got to sit down with some folks. Sure. May, I mean, our campaign process is long enough as it is. But this gets rid of the corporate interest because the corporate interest has nothing to do with the rank choices. It has nothing to do with it. There's no delegate system involved. There's no convention involved. Because this would go all the way down, too, by the way. This wouldn't just be for the presidential thing. So, you know, if it's if it's for five different Democratic candidates, um, you run it the same way. Yes, the process is going to be a little bit longer. But maybe we don't do this Super Tuesday and this primary caucus bullshit that we have to do. And we get in around like sometime in April and everybody fucking makes a decision together. All 50 states will, will vote for somebody in the, or, or March, whatever, pick a date, right? March 15th. We all go in and every state makes their pick. And then for the next two weeks, we publicly verify and make sure that the election is counted properly, make sure that the results aren't being manipulated. Take the effort. And not just that, but now, while we're having these discussions, we're going to have to, as people, get along with each other. As people, we're going to have to sit across the table from a conservative or a libertarian or a Democrat or a Green Party or an independent or a constitutionalist and go, well, tell me about what you believe. Why do you want to support this candidate? What is it about this candidate that's interesting to you? How do they value your... Can I give you my thing of why I think my candidate would make a good number two for you? You don't have to vote for them as your number one, but maybe consider them for a number two or, or even a number three position, right? So now we're not going with this winner take all, like you have to vote the same way I do. Are you fucking, are you out of your goddamn, no, it's just, okay, that's an interesting way to, way to look at this country. I, I would have never thought about it this way. Can I give you an, another perspective that maybe you, maybe this can be your number two perspective. We treat each other with a little bit more compassion. We become a little bit more intellectual as a society with this voting system. We look at politics in a different way because now, just even, even on a smaller level, we are able to communicate and participate in an election system. We are participating in our government. And some people are like, oh, the election process is complicated as it is. Yeah, it's complicated because there's moneyed interests involved. It's complicated because they are making it complicated. 
the difference between caucuses and pri who gives a shit make a vote count the vote that's what it should be that's what this does this makes it a little bit more fair and this makes it a little bit more easy to reach that majority it makes it a little bit more um necessary for us to understand each other and like i mentioned to, to some members of the DNC, which is a private corporation that controls our elections, they literally have lobbyists on their board making those decisions of who your nominee is. This is the Democratic National Convention that represents the Democratic Party. Same thing with the Republicans. They do this shit too. So really, what's the difference? They're both money, corporate interest parties. They don't like this process. They think it's an outrage, right? This, oh, participation award bullshit. It's not participation award. It's trying to get to an actual majority. It's trying to get to a good majority without this notion of spoilers. It's trying to diversify the, the political thought in this country. Be but they don't like this process because they don't get to pick the winner. They don't get to call the shots. They don't get to put their money and make that their mouth. This would eradicate the spoiler argument. It would eradicate this winner-take-all, wins-and-loses point of view. And it makes us go back to that compassionate ideology. What we're going to do with a ranked-choice voting system, should we choose to move forward with it, just like Maine did, just like... Minneapolis, St. Paul did. It's like Australia, Ireland, all these other countries and all these little areas did. If we choose to move forward with it as a country, we can now officially vote with our belief systems in mind. Vote with that compassion in mind. Vote with understanding your neighbors in mind. People that are against it are against the idea of doing that. They're against the idea of coming together as a community. Uh, Joe Biden is not for this. Trump probably isn't for this. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump just came out and was just like, yeah, let's strength choice vote. I would be. I'm fine with it. Let the people, let the people. But maybe this will also get us to a point where um, we, instead of trying to vote for a person or like this specific candidate or something, we start voting for ideas, right? So then we can kind of look at the notion of healthcare and be like, okay, how do we want to move forward? Uh, we have uh, the Australian model of healthcare. We have this Medicare for all being put forward by, you know, the, the Bernie Sanders and the Jaya Pauls. And then we have the cur current corporate system. Let's see which one people are going to rank the most and then make a, and then pass that legislation and move forward with that idea. That would be an interesting way of completely transforming the democracy. Using ranked choice system not to vote for particular political parties or candidates, but for ideas and putting those ideas forward. Kind of pushing us into that self-governance idea, that self-determining idea. I know it's a bit wild, it's a bit radical, it's a bit bold, it's out there, it's crazy. How would you ever... We start with this, though. We start with trying to look for a ranked choice voting system and trying to make that work. We try to start understanding what people from different belief systems actually believe and why they believe it. Why do they think that's the best way to move forward for this entire country. Let's try it. Let's try something a little bit different than what's already been put in place. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. 
Uh, there's going to be storytelling, uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comic. If you, if you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. Uh, and if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get 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 subscribed to this. Come come hang out with us. <laughs> but uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums which if you snag them from Bandcamp, are available as Pay What You Want, which means that they're uh, available for free. Uh, you can check out past videos. You can check out past podcasts. And uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And Or you can see how you know the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do... Um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation. So that is available. Uh, the tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. Uh, so make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish stand-up <laughs> comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one. Uh, and then we'll we'll go from there and we'll see see what happens from there. Uh, so grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom. Uh, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit that like. Make sure that you share this out. Get the word out about these videos. And, uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, Till the next video. Take it easy.